enjoys his stuff. Oh my god. 300 damage at level 5 in one turn. Just what's going on? What's going on over here? Like, oh my god. That's just broken. Hail and matches adventures. Welcome to the world of Baldur's Gate 3. It's me, the Spot King. And let's dive deep today because I got some cool and broken build for you. So this build for Paladin will work with any race, any race, wherever you like. Today I'm picking Orc to get the Savage attacks, so we will be rolling additional dice when we critical hit. Only for that, but any other race will work, it's whatever. So we're picking Paladin again for class subclass. You're not set in stone with picking your owls. You can pick whatever owls you like. I like owls of devotion because it will give us additional chance to hit when we level up a little bit. And chances to hit sometimes are just disappointing. So owls of devotion is not bad to choose. But if you want a lot more damage, I will show you in the later stages of this video how to respect your character. And when you become owls breaker, you can do even more crazy amount of damage so all of this will be covered today background don't matter pick whatever you like i like soldier when i'm playing paladin and our stats our stats is important okay we're going with strange as our main attribute for damage dealing dexterity we're getting just 10 so we are not like lacking in the saving throws but we're aiming for heavy armor so we don't care about dexterity too much constitution we need 14 in constitution we have some health points intelligence don't matter wisdom 10 because we can and charisma 16 is important stat to have let's go and show you the build so it's seer crit a lot so we're starting with paladin we're getting two levels in paladin and we're getting great weapon fighting fighting style. This will give us ability to reroll attack dice when we're scoring one or two on damage. So that's nice to have when we land in critical hits. We are sure that we're not landing critical hit with just two dice. And when we begin this orc, we got savage attacks, so we're rolling three dice with our weapon when we critical hit. And basically it will be rerolled three times, so if we hit three times one on the dice, so just cool synergy. So spells is not too important, we are playing Paladin of course, but we will use all our spell slots most of the time just for smite. But stuff that you can use is Bless to give you advantage or just additional 1d4 on attack rolls, very useful stuff to have. And some smites, like Searing Smite still works. Other spells don't matter too much for this build. And there's two ways. We can instantly go and switch to Sorcerer. So idea of this build, of course, to get a lot of Sorcerer points, a lot of Sorcerer levels to get more higher spell slots. And this will give us ability to cast our Smite, upcast it up to max levels, and that's crazy amount of damage. And you can do it from the start of the game, but at level 5 you will lack of your like unique ability and power, in my opinion at least. That's why I like to go with this build. Just straight with Paladin. With Paladin on level 3, we're getting this sacred weapon and we just get high chance to attack with this weapon. That's like my favorite part of Devotion Paladin. So, sacred weapon. Right now we got plus 5. You just cast it on yourself as soon as you hit level 3. And we instantly got plus 8. Because sacred weapon adds our charisma modifier. So, charisma modifier 16. Insane stats. Insane stats, guys. Plus 8 at these levels is insane. Yeah, it uses our action, yeah, only for 10 turns, but that's really big and nice stuff to have, especially when you need it. So, level 4 we're getting fit, and we got two ways to go. One way is to go ability improvement and just get more strange. So, it's just straightforward, plus 1 to attack rolls, plus 1 to damage, just nice fit to have. Another way to go is to get Great Weapon Masters. This will give you ability to attack with bonus action when you land in critical hit or killing target. So that's like crazy ability to have to be able to attack with your bonus action as Paladin because you're attacking with smites and that's crazy. Another cool part, you add in just flat 10 damage but you're sacrificing 5 attack roll. Again, we almost don't care about this minus 5 because we are just ignoring it with our divine weapon. So if you, your enemy got high armor class, you just turn it off. It's totally possible, but you can turn it on again and just get flat plus, plus 10 damage. 
very nice against targets with low armor. So I tend to go with Great Weapon Master. And then we're getting to level 5. That's kind of break point for all these builds in early game. Because at level 5 you get this extra attack. So right now we got 3 attacks in one turn without any potions, other stuff. Because we can kill target with 2 attacks easily. And then use bonus action to kill target again. Another target. And at level 5 our build will look like this. Let me show you this in action. So about gear. You want to go and focus on heavy armor. And in this level, at level 5, 6, you don't care about gear too much. Uh, this, uh, just pick best weapon possible. And you will be aiming for two-handed weapon. So best two-handed weapon you will find that's doing 1d12 damage will work for you. Because you want higher dice roll possible. But that's our build for late game. So you got different ideas what you want to build. All these items will be uh, in the pinned comment, so you can find them if you need to. And what do we have here? We have Birthright. It's uh, in Act 3. We get plus 2 to Charisma. It will work be with one of our respect. So with this build especially, it's not too beneficial. We want most of the time this Dark Justiciar Helmet. And while we are obscured, we are rolling critical hit when we're hitting it with 19. That's nice helmet to have when you, you want to critical hit. And this will just reduce this number by one with no matter what we are doing. So that's nice helmet to have too. And very scary one. But it's only in Act 3, all this has. So this is like again late game weapon. And on hit it's uh, doubling damage from our strange modifier. That's why we can go into strange. In addition, you can drink some potion. That's giving you like 20 or more strange. Just flat, really strong stuff. That shot you can buy it from vendor in Act 3. Again, reducing numbers that you need to roll when you critical hit. And it doesn't matter you're rolling it with the bow or not. So it works on our weapon too. Creator Flesh Gloves gives additional force damage when you're dealing critical hits. And we will do a lot of critical hits with this build. So another stuff. Surgeon Subjunation Amulet. Find it in Act 2. And when we're scoring a critical hit on Humanoid, you can paralyze this target for two turns. And when target paralyzed, every hour hit will make critical strength. Strike. That's crazy amulet, just broken one. And when we're killing creature, our next attack roll will be critical hit again. You can get it in Act 2, almost all of these items. And that's crazy. So you're killing easy creature, then next attack will be critical hit. And if you attack on humanoid, this hit will paralyze humanoid. And all other attacks will be critical hits. And you critical hitting with just smites. And that's crazy. So you want to cast magic weapon on yourself to give plus one to attack rolls with your weapon. Most of the time, at least most of the time you want to do it, but it will use level two spell slot. Right now it's just a little bit scary to use spell slots, but it's totally fun. So your fight will look something like this. You can start fight with buffing yourself if you need to. So if you got low chance to hit your enemies, you just go and use sacred weapon. Sacred weapon for 10 turns with action and channel all charge. So your weapon is buffed. And then depending on your enemies, if you're fighting against celestials, fiends and undeads, on level 5 you will fight a lot of undeads in this game. So you cast it on yourself too. Now we get advantage on your attack rolls and just look at that. On next turn you will hit all your attacks. So next turn you got 100% chance to hit. Even this turned on Great Master Olin. It will reduce your hit chance by 5 and that's a big number. So let's just attack. Okay, it's not critical hit but this flat like 24 damage. Totally nice. And if you get exactly this stuff you will be rolling your damage a lot when you're hitting this 2 damage with your attack. You will add a lot of modifiers to your attacks and basically doing flat 24 damage. Easy, easy stuff. Additionally, when you kill creature, you got your bonus section to attack with Great Weapon Master, so you can do one more attack. And additionally, of course, you got this Divine Smite. So we just killed a creature, so our next attack should be critical hit. And let's just use this Divine Smite, so I will show you critical hit with upcast at level 2. So that's the damage, just <laughs> enjoy this stuff. Oh my god, he just destroyed. Okay, look, look at chart, look at chart. So we're doing 
Oh my god, how much numbers is here? We're doing 46 slashing, because that's critical strike from our weapon. Our weapon doing 2d6. That's why you won't actually find weapon with 1d12. It will be better weapon. So we're doing this damage. We're rerolling sometime when we're doing little damage. Then we add in plus 3, plus 3. Strange modifier. Modifier from Giant Slayer, if you got this sword. Great weapon master, plus 10. And additional savage attacks from our orc. And that's just crazy amount of damage with just level 2 smite. So we did... How much we did, actually? Uh, this was damage for our normal weapon attack. Just 35 damage. Then we're rolling our critical smite. And savage attacks add into this stuff, too. So we're rolling a critical hit on our radiant smite, on just our smite. And as you can see, every time we're rolling low damage, we're rolling this stuff. That's why great weapon master fighting style is insane. So every time we're rolling one damage with our smite, we're rolling it and making more damage. And we're rolling 8d8 radiant damage because it's critical hit and additional 1d8 with our savage attacks from our orc. So that's just insane, 43 more damage. Then we add in force damage from our gloves, from our gloves. And this damage is doubled because we add in 2d6 uh, damage two times uh, because it's critical hit. And we add in one more d6 from our orc class. Again, savage attacks. Yeah, so we add in one more time. But as you can see, we hit it two times. Why? Because it's, uh, let me just explain you this stuff. So this gloves, whenever we're scoring a critical hit, deal an additional damage. Yeah, yeah. It's doubled because it's critical hit. And we add in one more dice because we are orc. We are orc. And that's why you want this 1d12 uh, roll. So I got uh, like bad weapon. 2d6 is not really insane weapon. Find 1d12 weapon. And we're rolling critical strike on normal attack and on smite attack. So it's like two critical strikes. And that's why we got this two stuff from our gloves and that's just, I don't know, it's broken. It's broken, we're doing like, we can make uh, around uh, like 100 damage every hit, three hits in a row on level 5. So we can do 300 damage at level 5 in one turn. That's just broken. So let's finish build. And to finish this stuff, we're basically switching back to Sorcerer. I mean, we're starting our Sorcerer levels. We don't care about our spells, just whatever you like. So what we want to pick? There's two ways to go with this. You can go with Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer. You can go with White Dragon to get this Armor of Agatus. So you sometimes use your high level spell slots to get this Armor of Agatus and you will be more tanky, deadly in the front lane, just to, you know, crazy strong dude. But when playing Seer Crit a lot, you know, you want to have fun. I hope so, at least you're playing game to have a lot more fun. And not just look on min-maxed numbers. So, I recommend going with Wild Magic. It's just insane and funny stuff. You can activate Tides of Chaos, and you will get advantage on next attack roll, ability check, or whatever. And you will have increased chance of, for Wild Magic Surge after this stuff in 12 magic is just fun it's just fun to play and why not to have fun so the spells that you can possibly have is like shield you will use it as reaction just to inflict some damage and that's it so that's it you don't need any other spells you can pick exploration and other like useless stuff so with uh, meta magic on level 7 you want to go with twin spell and distance spell sometimes you can use twin spell and this twin spell will be used on magic weapons, so you can infuse your weapon with plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls, and your allies weapon. So sometimes you can use this. Next up, third level, that's where we get into level 8 and we're becoming super broken crazy dude. So what do we want to have here? We want to have quickened spell and we want to have this hold person stuff. So while you're not broken against every type of creature you will see, you're becoming just deadly seer crit a lot. And that's why, because hold person, when you're holding humanoids, will make every attack critical hit against them. That's crazy and cool stuff. Next, level 9. 
you're getting more stronger at level 9, a lot more stronger. Because we're getting one more feat. So again, feats of choice can be ability improvement, go to strange, to increase your power, damage, whatever, whatever, whatever. Another way to go, you can go with Savage Attacker. Savage Attacker will roll two dices every time you roll in damage dices with melee weapons and will pick higher results. So, we're rolling a lot of dices as you can see, that's why we're picking Savage Attacker for this build. Spells don't matter, pick whatever you like and basically finish build with Sorcerer. On level 10, nice spell to have is Hast. So you can concentrate on Hast on yourself instead of magic weapon. So instead of plus one to attack rolls, you will get two actions and you can make around five attacks each turn and that's crazy level 11 you get this action from sorcerer and you can give one t4 bonus to attack roll to yourself for two sorcery points very nice to have yeah you can use sorcery points to create more spell slots but you can use them to give you advantage on your attacks not advantage but just one t4 it's nice too and then you're finishing your build with Paladin or Sorcerer. So, as you can see right now, it's working like that. No matter you picking Paladin or Sorcerer, you will get spell slot progression. So, with Sorcerer, you get more sorcery points. That's nice uh, stuff to have. And get access to this level for spells. We don't need the spells, so we don't care too much. And with Paladin, you get this aura of protection that will give your charisma bonus to you and your allies on saving throws. And in my opinion, that's like best way to finish this build. So our Seer crit a lot is ready. <laughs> Let me show you him in action and what you can do <laughs> in later stages of the game. So first of all, of course, you can use your sorcery points to create spell slots of level 4. So you get more smites of level 4. We don't care too much. I will show you cool ways how you can use uh, these sorcery points. So basically, you're starting your fight. And that's like the coolest stuff you can do with this paladin. So, depending on what creatures you're fighting. If you're fighting creatures that is not humanoids, you can go with Hust. Make sure to turn on your passives to have Wild Magic active, Great ma uh, we Weapon Master all in if you need to. So as you can see, we got 75% hit chance, but we can turn it off and we'll get 100% hit chance. 75 is still okay. It's just depending on what enemies you see, you decide by yourself. So if it's not humanoids, just go with Hust. Cool stuff that you can do with your sorcery points. You can use Twinned spell and you can cast Hust on yourself and on your ally. That's like cool way to go. So you will be Husted and your ally will be Husted. Same goes with our hold person. So you can go and try to hold two persons at the same time or you can upcast it to cast even on more persons. So you try to hold everyone and they hold it. So basically they hold it right now. Now every attack against this person will be critical hit. And just for showcase, I will use our upcasted Divine Smite after level 5 spell slot. Enjoy, guys! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Look at this stuff. Look at this stuff. It's just crazy. Just what's going on? What's going on over here? Like, oh my god. Oh my god. It's just crazy. That's just crazy. And the coolest part, we can do it <laughs> one more time. Yeah, with level 4, but whatever. Level 4. Let's crit. <laughs> oh yeah, we, we shouldn't do it. We 100% uh, critical strike this bro anyway. Yeah, coolest part, we can do it third time with Great Weapon Master Olin when we kill these dudes. So what's happened? What's happened? Let me just show you. We're rolling 2d12 for our weapon. But we're rolling every time we pick in highest number and every time we're rolling for one, we're trying to reroll one more time. So basically, every time we roll damage, we're picking highest possible result. Next up, we add in modifiers, plus 2 from weapon, 3 from strange, 10 from great weapon master all in flat. And one more time, we're rolling our savage attacks, so we're rolling again 1d12 and doing 10 damage. Next up, we add in our damage, I guess it's like from our axe, hellfire damage, and again, we're rolling every time we rolled little numbers, we're rolling again, so we're doing maximum damage possible. Next up we got our Divine Smite and we're rolling 12d8 Divine Smite plus one more roll 
of 1d8 from our savage attacks and just look at this stuff this is just amazing i don't want to commentate what's going on over here but we're basically picking highest numbers possible always and we can't roll one or two so that's just insane and that's why we rolled 73 damage so maximum damage possible was 81 we rolled 76 and that's, that's just insane and then we're rolling 2d6 from our gloves plus 1d6 from our savage attacks two times and basically we're rolling every damage instance again so that's just a rolling of uh, bonus damage and just crazy amount of damage this is just this is just insane 100 damage three times in a turn so let's concentrate on hust with level 3 spell and we activated wild magic surge so we become blurred and now everyone gets disadvantage on attacks against us that's like crazy stuff so we can go and start attacking so let's have some fun oh he's just destroyed with one hit oh my god mind flare destroyed with just one hit one single hit that's crazy in coolest part we can still continue our attacks and as you can see we rolled 10 we can use this stuff to gain advantage and we hit we're using divine smite we <laughs> destroying this bro so now our super magic can hit again and it will be wild magic fast very, very fun to play but i told you i will show you how to respect this bro so respect build it will be kind of different version and it's version for late game if you don't want to play exactly like this but still i think it's very viable version that i showed you but respect build will be with two levels of paladin to get this great weapon fighting then you're getting warlock with great old one subclass and we're getting six levels in this warlock at least spell doesn't matter too much we want to get devil's sight as our eldritch invocation and agonizing blast and repelling blast so just basic stuff we're getting pact of the blade so we can add our charisma modifier to our blade attacks and hold person of course same as with saucer feats will be the same great weapon master and we want to get up to level six to get this entropic ward so when we summon attacking us we can use this uh, as a reaction to inflict disadvantage on attack against us and we will get advantage on next turn we want to hit a lot we zero crit a lot so entropic ward is nice feature to have spell of choice is darkness or hunger of hader and then there's two ways how to finish it uh, you can go with uh, paladin up to level six so you make a six six split with paladin and warlock problem you will get low level spell slots with this style especially so that's why we go into sorcerer and again that's not like full build it's a respect build so you go with two paladin six warlock and then finish with sorcerer with four levels in sorcerer we get in semi rules fun build is uh, wild magic right build is draconic bloodline with extra hit points and with four levels of sorcerer you can get the savage attackers feet again so how this play out it will be a little bit less damage a little bit less but you got this darkness stuff so right now we get 75 percent chance to hit enemies but we go into darkness mode and now we get advantage against every target plus we got magic surge so it's fun and we just activated wild magic action surge so we used our magic and we got additional actions that's fun part so we got advantage on enemies they got disadvantage on us most of the time because we got this ability to see in magical darkness that we just made on them and with advantage we basically rolling nice attacks and hitting with great damage but yeah maximum is 48 of our divine smite let's do it oh look at this yeah we're doing a little bit less damage but exactly this build is still doing pretty nice damage we're still rolling 10 d8 instead of 12 d8 with our divine smite we're doing nice damage with normal attacks and we're getting advantage on every enemy we see and here we can attack with our bonus section with great weapon master we can use our critical strike stuff and this is just crazy so definitely if you prefer this like darkness assassin build it will definitely work for you 
hardest part to keep these enemies inside of darkness, of course, it's like hardest part. And to get around of this, you can go instead of uh, Great Weapon Master Olin, instead of this plus uh, 10 flat damage, you can go with Sentinel. So when you're using the opportunity attacks, when the enemies try to leave this darkness, they will stuck in the place. And you will always get this advantage on attack rolls against them. Oh! Seer crit a lot. With advantage, you just crit every attack. Just two attacks in a row. Oh my god, and we can use uh, this extra attack with Great Weapon Master. And we can use Divine Smite on this too. Uh, this dude's just destroyed with full health. These two dudes just destroyed. I think it's broken. Oh my god, guys. I hope you enjoyed this broken build in Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> and I got awesome videos for you. Look at this. I just beat Act 1 with only potatoes. So you can go and watch and have fun in this video. Or watch other cool builds on the screen right now. See you in the next videos.